All right, so we're here with Mr. Guy again. Uh, this is Coin Guy. And we're gonna talk to him today about uh, all things coin related and coin shop related, I hope. Mr. Guy, you don't mind being on YouTube, do you? Not at all. Happy New Year to everybody. something about silver that I thought was interesting. Absolutely. You know, a lot of people buy constitutional silver, and I, of course, sell constitutional silver. And at this point, it's not a problem. But I think it's going to become, it's going to become an issue when silver starts to get to be really expensive. Or well, when it does get to be expensive. Okay. So you like the term <clears throat> constitutional silver. Yeah, I don't Not like big... junk anything to talk about American currency. And of course, we're talking about 90% silver. Yes, dimes, quarters, halves, 90% is constitutional. Constitutional gold, too, like all of this old gold. 90%. Yeah, well, this is 90% gold. Um, as, you know, cause sometimes it's confusing. I'll get a person call me and say, hey, I got a $5 gold piece, and what do you pay? And I'll give them a prize. Oh, you're way off. And I'll say, what $5 gold piece are you talking about? I mean, this is technically a $5 gold, and this is a $5 gold. This is the old $5 gold piece, and this is the new $5 gold piece. Well, this is almost a quarter of an ounce, and that's a tenth of an ounce. Right. So it really sounds like I'm ripping you off, but no, you got to be, I guess you got to clarify a little bit what you were talking about. Gotcha. But getting back to the constitutional, um, I remember 1980. I remember in 1980 when people, you would go to shows and people were breaking up rolls of uncirculated Franklin halves, rolls of walking Liberty half dollars. Because, it, you know, you get like in April of 79 or March of 79, they were $9 uncirculated. By December, they were buying them for 35 times face. They were paying... Seventeen dollars, seventeen fifty each, in any grade. So when you used to get nine dollars for an unk, and now you can get seventeen, they were breaking up rolls, throwing brand new, you know, uncirculated uh, Walking Liberty has into bags. Jeez, it was outrageous. Yeah. And then the same idea, what happened then, and it never really came up. But at what point do you got to be careful what constitutional silver you're buying? And I mean that in this respect. Here's ten dollar roll of quarters. Okay. Okay. Here is ten dollars in quarters. Yes, the size different, huh? Well, these are standing quarters that are worn, no dates, and this same thing will carry over if you have a lot. I remember even in two thousand eleven, twelve, the dealers then was the first hint of it when silver was at forty nine, and they were asking uh, the dealers were saying. How much barber coinage is in there? How much mercury dimes are in there? Because you have tremendous weight difference in a, what they call a bag of silver, which is $1,000 face, is 715 ounces of silver, mm -hmm. technically. 715 ounces. Well, if you have a lot of barber coinage, the weight's going to be down. And these dealers were telling me then with dimes, they didn't want to pay the same. They wanted to pay a percentage back. Whereas if you had more than 20% barber coinage, they didn't want to pay you 30 times. Because, well, here's the idea. That makes total sense. Yeah, you know, you're looking at this and you say, well, you know, how much do I lose? If you lose, now this may, some of this is, you know, when you look at that, you're thinking, well, it might be 20%. In actuality, it's about 10%. If we weigh this. It's still significant. Oh, certainly. 166 penny weights. Let's just say the tube weighs the same. This is 153 penny weights. 13 penny weights. 9 to 10%. It looks like more, but a lot of it is the fact that the rim, the core of the coin, is where most of your weight is. Right. But there is a difference. Now, 10%, if you're looking at 715 ounces to 1,000, and you've only got 
650 ounces in a bag of dimes, well, we're talking about a time when silver's at $100 an ounce, and a 65-ounce difference is $6,500. Big time. That might have, you know, I don't know when, but it could have a difference. Personally, my own holdings is all in proof and uncirculated. Okay. I don't think it's a thing you worry about too much, but if you get a whole bag of quarters that have no dates, or somebody wants to sell you a whole bag of worn-out barbers, you should negotiate a little bit. Yeah. Hey, you know, day-to-day, -day, end of the world, zombie apocalypse, it's not going to be that big a, big a deal. A dime will be a dime. But if you're looking for a bulk idea and one day you have to sell, you might run into a problem with something like this. Because, you know, as I'm trying to illustrate, you know, it does make a difference. And you've lost your numismatic value when you have oh, no yeah, date on a coin. There's no dates on these coins. So it's like if, if you wanted to sell them to a coin collector, they're not going to really want yeah. the dated or dateless coins. Look at that, 1942. It's a pretty one. Pretty one. Yeah. Let's see if it's got the date. Well, I know a lot of people that I talk to, they collect no only just like you, just the really pretty stuff. Yeah. This, is, this is the stuff I put away. This is a roll I'll bring home. Yeah. This is the stuff I keep. When not I for put sale. together, yeah, I put a roll like this. You know, I'm not going to sell this for, let's say, 13 times space. The 42 probably is an $8 coin uncirculated. Yeah. But I don't really care. To me, it's kind of cool. I like the youngs. I'll let my grandkids have to worry about that one day. So with constitutional silver, uh, when is it something that you would sell as normal constitutional silver prices versus something that's more numismatic? Like, where, where does that transition happen? You know what I'm talking about? Well, to me, if you looked at that roll of quarters I just had there, the uncirculated roll of quarters. Yeah. Of course, the 1942 that's on the top is not really a bullion coin. That's not just a constitutional silver bullion coin. It's a better coin. But it's almost like the semi-key pennies. When you've got 14 of them, or you've got a roll of them, and I think I have almost a roll of 42s in Unk, because they come in here and there where you pull them out. of. Sometimes you'll get a coin book where... Everything is worn, and it's just basically bullion. And wow, there's a 42 unk or a 46 unk. Or I think a 55 roll of quarters is worth little more than a 64 roll of quarters. But that's as a coin collector. The survival rate, I guess, is, in is involved in that too. Yeah. Uh, it's just when you look in gray sheet, and if there's an $8 value on that uncirculated quarter, it's not just constitutional silver anymore. It's got to have value. Um, I think I have a roll of Mercury Dimes up, 42s or 45s on, on, uh, on eBay. Or you can call us directly and we can tell you which roll it is. And I want more than silver for that roll of Mercury Dimes. Yeah. But not crazy amount. I know I'm not going to get $8 a coin when you're selling 50 of them or $10 a coin, but I should be able to get six. I certainly think more they're worth more than a dollar thirty. Sure. Because they're uncirculated mercury dimes. Absolutely. And if I'm a different a very large company that's I believe their their base is in New Hampshire that sells a lot of modern coins, get them directly from the mint, and they package them and I see them all the time in here. There's probably some in the Let's Make Deal box where they get the modern mintage, they put it in plastic and they charge twenty times face value for it. I mean, there's some companies that will... I remember years ago, standing quarters were three times face at 75 cents a piece. And this friend of mine was buying them from a company that's based in New Hampshire. He was paying $12 for a silver quarter. Wow. 1926, 1928. For one quarter. Because this company is known for it. I get a lot of phone calls from people I talk to who live in Kansas, northern Nebraska... I think that's where those kinds of companies do their best business because um, they don't have access. I get people who tell me, well, there's nobody within 100 miles of me or 50 miles of me. Uh, a client of mine moved to Tennessee, and he told me, guy, 65 miles to find a coin dealer. Holy smokes. <laughs> and when they go to the coin dealer, he doesn't look like this. It's a guy who has a small booth 
in an antique mall, and he has three trays of coins. Oh, man. Um, I based this formation after the Rubensteins. Like I said, I learned a lot there. I watched and I learned. And, um, you know, this is how I grew up collecting coins, and I try to present it to other people the same way. Uh, I think they should see a variety of coins. I remember people saying, you got to be careful. Don't, you know, where people will walk in, they want to sell you their coins. Well, you can look at my prices. The problem with that is they'll have a, they'll have a 1942 quarter or a 1936 D quarter. And they'll say, well, yours is $180. Yeah, but mine's uncirculated. Yours is a good. And somebody wrote a, you know, put an initial in the background of a J or something. There's a difference there. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's not exactly the same. That's the drawback. The downside but you can usually explain it or you try to tell the people yeah you know i bought this you know i just paid 15 or 15 20 for this and gold is 1563 i sell that for 1570 yeah it's is a, it unreasonable to make 50 dollars no it's a little profit you got a business you know, yeah. on on yeah but some people think yeah yeah i have the people who call me say hey i have 20 gold eagles uh i want spot in 10 I said, well, what do I get? You know, you you pick in time and place and you get to sell it right now. I need a little meat on the bone to sell it or to sit on it because gold and silver has become pretty volatile. You know, you saw a movement of, I think, 18% last year on gold and silver. Well, what if it, you know, I've seen silver drop $2 in a day. Yep. Certainly could drop $2 in a week. I think I had that in one of, your, one of my past videos. Yeah, September 4th, silver was had a high of 1970 that day. By 9.13, nine days later, it was down to 17.43. Wow. Two dollars and uh, 27 cents it dropped. That's quick. In eight days. You know, that's, that could be devastating if you bought 600 ounces and bars or something that you have to hold for. Uh, here's something cool I picked up. If you have to hold it for, uh, you know, for 30 days. For a shotgun. It's a five-ounce silver <clears throat> ingot, but not an ingot. It's a five-ounce shotgun shell. Can I touch it? Sure. Okay. You have seen these, all the bullets and stuff. These are really cool. Yeah. Just hefty, man. That thing is just solid. Very cool. I get the people come in, the younger people. Well, you know, is, is this is not made, you know, because you know what they're trying to say. This isn't made to hunt werewolves. This is not a real bull. <laughs> right. This is this is a disclaimer. This is not fire. That thing is solid. There's no gun. There's nothing in there. This is an ingot. <laughs> you, know, you know, you don't hunt the, you don't hunt the big hairy animals with you'd this. Have to, you'd have to throw it at it. Yeah, you, well, yes, you can throw them, hit them in the head. Then you get the people who come in with this, and they want to, uh, they don't realize that you're actually buying coinage now. That was, uh, you know, it changed. It's not worth the value. Well, they're still silver eagles. Yeah. But you don't want to pay $39 for these. This, this stuff, uh, I'm just going to give you my personal opinion on it. It disgusts me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like the colored stuff. Yeah, but you can take care of that too, you know. You just soak these in acetone. It comes right off. Acetone will take it off? Yeah, take it right off. What's that, like a uh, fingernail polish yeah. remover? Yeah, it's, what, it's one of the things you'll see. You know, you're not supposed to clean coins, but acetone... We'll take off dirt. We'll take off loose glue. You'd be surprised how many people will tape their quarters or they tape, a, especially the old books where you push them in and you got heavy silver dollars and you're just, you're just not going to stay in. And they put a piece of tape right across it and you got that yellow gunk on there. Yeah, I've seen you that. Know, That's why they're doing it. Okay. You take a Q-tip, you put the acetone on it. It'll take it right off, and it doesn't do any harm to the coin. I've got several coins with tape on it, and I was like, what are they doing taping these coins? That makes total sense. That's what they do. Okay. I mean, it's because it's they're taped in because they fall out, especially the pennies. You know, you get a 13S penny that's worn out, or a 22 plane that's worn out, and you've got a 57 uncirculated wheat penny. That you're going to have to push in, but the 13... The, you know, the 14D or a key date or a semi-key date or any of those earlier pennies in Lincoln are going to be worn all around, including the rim, and they fall out. They fit in nice and easy. 
They're easy to push in, but they're easy to fall out. Yeah. And people routinely used to tape them in. Right on. And, and with the heavier coins, you've got the gravity and the weight of the silver that make it fall out a lot easier. You said that you like dimes the best. You, you recommend dimes Any book dimes I've read about and anything you see, they talk about dimes being the, uh, you know, the prepper favorite. Yeah. Uh, because the, the idea is that, and I've said this before, the idea is that it'll get you a gallon of gas, it'll buy you a bullet, uh, it'll get you water. You know, they're easy negotiable. Yeah. It's like the people who come in here and they say, well, I want to buy an ounce of gold. And I'll say, well, right now it's the only ounce I have right now. I have been able to keep up with demand for one ounce gold. Um, I have three gold ingots that are coming out actually uh, in the next day or two. But... They're one ounce. What if you need a quarter ounce, I said, or something smaller? I mean, I sell something like this. This has been in jewelry. It says, you know, it's been cleaned. Uh, you know, I tell you up front, it's got, well, it's details. That means that there's a problem. Sure. But it's still a constitutional gold coin. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're looking at gold today. You've got gold at 1563. This coin is 24.2% actual gold weight. They're not quarter ounce. The old coins were made to circulate, so they're alloyed with copper, and you had to have some room for them to pay employees to make these things. Couldn't make them pure. Uh, times 0.242. That's how much actual gold is in it. There's $378 in gold in this. A lot. At today's price. Yeah. $378 in gold. So how are you going to divide that if you need to? Well, the point is, if you had a one-ounce coin and you need something small, now this is a quarter of an ounce, approximately. Yeah. I'm selling this for three eighty-five, So I'm trying to get, what, seven or eight bucks over gold. Yeah. That's very reasonable. That's totally reasonable. You know, that's how it works. And at the same time, you may not always be able to go around and use one-ounce silver eagles or silver dollars. You want to go with something. You need dimes. Dimes work. I mean, 10 dimes make a dollar, but it's like the old pieces of eight where they used to divide them into eight parts. Two, two bits of an eight is a quarter. Just same, same concept. Yeah. You know, you go from small to large, um, and eight will make a dollar. I have noticed, and this is, I'm not trying to be a salesman for your shop, but that your stuff is priced extremely reasonable. When I shop around at other places, um, sometimes I'm floored by the premium they put on like gold or silver bullion, um, even coins, just regular I coins. I had a woman come down here from, uh, I think she was in the Jacksonville area. <laughs> I love the people who come down and they, and they said, you know, you're selling this uh, silver eagle at $20, $25 over, I mean gold eagle, at $20, $25 over. She goes, they're $150 up by me. They buy them for $150 back. And they sell them for a hundred and fifty back. Hmm. You know, I think you can. I think you could see people out in Nebraska might get away with that because you have no competition, or you buy it from one of the big TV channel ones, and people say, "Well, I bought it from there. I can't sell it to you." Yeah, but you pay three hundred dollars an ounce over. You have to shop around. You know, I'm more down to earth. Twenty five dollars to me. Well, I bought it for a couple of percent back. One or two two percent back, and I sell it for one percent over. Some things I don't even get one percent. This coin probably has a premium. I mean, if we look, Nate, look up the 1990 um, Australian nugget, the one with the kangaroo on it. 1990. Yeah, I'm sure this has a premium. That's another thing you got to look at. When you look at the premiums on eBay, I mean, I just got my last eBay statement for the month of December, 22% in fees. Holy smokes, why? I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, 18% I've seen, 15%. It's getting to be insane. Yeah. Let's just take a medium number like 15%. Well, if a coin, let's say you sell a gold coin for 1700 let's say it's 1700 on eBay. I see this coin is seventeen hundred on eBay, so you've got seventeen hundred times point eight five. If you sell it for seventeen hundred, you're only going to get fourteen forty five. 
Which is below spot, yeah? Yeah, like $115. Yeah, ridiculous. You come in my store, and I tell you, well, you know what? Uh, I'll take seven. I'll take fifteen seventy-five. Twelve bucks over. And if you good. buy a couple of them, I might give them to you for for fifteen hundred. And that's seventeen. Fifteen seventy-five. I take fifteen seventy even. I only sell Cougarans, Maple Leafs, either spot or a couple of dollars over. I make it easy. Hundred over. A hundred over. This is on eBay for a hundred over. Hundred over spot. Plus shipping. Now, if you're the guy selling this, and you've got it for fifteen sixty-five, so you got it for sixteen sixty-five, sixteen sixty-five times point eight five. That guy's probably only getting with fourteen fifteen. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now you're you're selling it on eBay for a hundred and fifty under melt. That's crazy. You're better off taking a trip to a major city. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you get a person come down to me from Jacksonville. Well, this woman was interesting. She bought the silver, the gold coin I wanted, that I had, and she wanted to order 10 more. And she wanted to pay me with a credit card. <laughs> credit card on gold bullion. Yeah, well, there's a couple of fundamental problems. First, I, I only had three others, and I wasn't going to take a credit card on bullion stuff because there's no room to pay the credit card companies. And maybe when you're making a hundred and fifty dollar premium, or two hundred dollar premium, but even at those numbers, you'd be paying forty and fifty dollars in credit card fees. Yeah, it gets to be devastating. It just isn't there. That's why I don't take credit cards on bullion related items. It just isn't. There isn't room for it. Uh, if we do work out something, you know, it's got to be figured in the mix. And we've we've done quite a bit of sales. Um, to people who have called from different states. But usually it's collector, you know, collector coins. I was at a private home last week and I bought a bunch of stuff. And there were books and books of state quarters, colorized. And I know the people pay incredible amounts of money for that stuff. It's just breathtaking. But what they did have was a pretty set in a box like this. And it had coins of the Civil War. There were 13 coins. I bought it at a home. I put it up for auction, and I wanted to get, uh, I sold it, I believe, for $99. There's like $130 and stuff in it, in gray shape. Hmm. I found the paperwork that the people paid for this. It was, I believe it was 13 payments of $75. Oh, wow. It was like $950. Comes in a pretty box, you know, made out of nice wood. They paid like $950 for this thing. Once again, they don't have access to uh, to stores like this. They exaggerate. They'll say, don't you want to buy this roll of 1979 uh, Susie B. Dollars? Here's a roll of Susie B. Dollars, 1979. $299. Whoa. 25 coins, and that, that's probably not exaggerating. $299. Just think, if your ancestor bought an uncirculated roll of these 1879 Morgan dollars in uncirculated, just think of the appreciation of that coin in a 65. <laughs> you know, they compared to a coin that's maybe going for 80 and 100 apiece. Well, yeah, that roll's maybe worth 20,000 now. Yeah. Just, and that's what they compared it to. I wouldn't be surprised at something like this. You know, they do it pretty, you know, and you compare it to a, a seventeen ninety five dollar. Why not make this a seventeen ninety four dollar? You know, it's like a hundred thousand dollar coin. Jeez. And you put in, you know, three of these. I would not be surprised that this is twenty dollars. That's ridiculous to even try to compare the two. But that's the kind of stuff, and you get. I remember selling a set of these or buying it. This came in a beautiful box. This came in a beautiful box. I mean, they're pretty, but um, they're a dime a dozen. You know. Or a dollar each. Have that <laughs> you find these at the banks all day long. Here's the kind of boxes they come in. Pretty box. Pretty box. This is an example of one of the things. We put this on eBay. I didn't want to break them up. I thought it was kind of cool. 
These are $2 bills. These are legitimate $2 bills. Yeah. The holder is worth more than the bill, but that's another story. Why have I never seen these? What what they do to them? They they enhance them with with this colorization behind there. They put them in a holder. Um I lost the paperwork on this. So this is not from the U.S. Uh, Mint? And... No, this is secondary. There were 30 a piece is what they were selling them for. It's like after you buy the first five, they give you the free box. And you're paying $700 divided by 28 $25 a piece. $25 for those $2 bills. Yeah. Good deal. And that's just normal. <laughs> but they put on a nice, you know, they, they're, these, these are the hustlers. Yeah. And this is the kind of packaging you'll see. I'm not paying you anywhere near what you pay for this. Yeah, can't. I can give you a small premium because I'll try to sell them individually. But in many cases, there's just nowhere to go with this. Um, I was in a large facility that's on 19 where you pay a couple of thousand a month to live there, assisted living facility. And a woman called me to go look. And I go in, and there's a table full of these kinds of boxes and these kinds of coins, you know, with stuff like this. Or it's got, uh, it's got a whole bunch of these. Yeah. Now, these, they sell for 10 bucks a piece. All the colorized things? Yeah, the colorized. They come in a big book, New York, and there'll be a whole, all the states. As soon as I saw that, and I said, I didn't want to waste her time or my time. And I spoke, she was in her 80s, and I explained to her, I said, you know, did you think this is beautiful? All of my friends, you know, they're sitting downstairs playing Mahjong or whatever the, you know, the older ladies are doing, and they're playing bingo. And, uh, you know, what is this, you know, what is this, what do you think is beautiful? I said, it's pretty, but it has no value. What do you mean? And I pointed out a couple of items. I don't think there was $50 worth of silver, and any of the silver that had value with a colorized uh, silver eagles. It was a whole bunch of this stuff, that stuff. And I'm talking about, one look told me the woman paid $15,000 for this stuff. Jeez. I walked away. I mean, there was nothing to, it was, she, you could tell she didn't believe me or she didn't want to believe me. But if you get satisfaction out of it for yourself, fine. But don't spend your grandchildren's future doing it. Sure. I mean, that makes sense. it's great to look out for them. And those are the kind of lines they'll give you on television. These are the kind of lines they'll give you. But know that those guys are not doing this for nothing. Uh, my wife uh, called me over. She was watching. She taped it. It was one of the famous guys on TV. And he was selling uh, $20 gold pieces. And he had come into a large group in the 1850s of $20 gold pieces. And everything was graded, I believe it was AU50 or AU53. And he's going to give them to you for three payments of $999. It was like $3,000 a coin. He had 50 of them or 80 of them. And he puts on a nice show. You know, it's like, I know coins. And I'm thinking, wow, my wife, did you want, did you want that for your birthday? No, 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 wait a minute. You know, don't buy this for my birthday. Don't surprise me <laughs> with this three thousand dollar coin. I pull out gray sheet. The coin is seventeen fifty in an AU. He's getting twenty nine ninety five times sixty. Well, did we just make a hundred grand? <laughs> I mean, they're not doing this for free, right, right? And you really have to do your research. You know, even go on eBay, and even when you go on eBay, you got to watch out for the shysters, but. Do a little homework. Find somebody who's honest around you. We'll show you the, yeah, I'll show you the gray sheet. Well, I appreciate you being a, an honest shop. And uh, I know you got to make money and you don't, you don't seem like to me you make enough, but you know, that's, that's your business. <laughs> I'm getting social security starting this month. Oh, wow. I'll get my first check the end of next month. There you go. You've earned it. Yeah, well, I've, you I've survived. been paying into it. For, <laughs> I'm still paying into it. I've been paying into it for 48 years. So I guess I should get something at the end. Well, I haven't gotten it yet. I'll probably get my first. My wife is telling me today, I hope you make it. I hope I make it. I got to get to February 1st in order to get my January check. Because yeah. I'm born at the end of August, so I'll get it at the end of February. But 
I think I get another two weeks in me. I hope so. Jeez. That's <laughs> I'd kind like of, to get my first check. I hope you make it. My goodness. <laughs> you know, she tells me. Maybe that's her trying to tell you something. You know what, she I mean? what are you going to do with that money? I said, I'm going to buy a gold coin every month with her. There you go. That's I don't a good really idea. need the money to live on, so I'm going to buy a gold coin and the grandkids will get it one day. You know, that's to me, it's the fun. You know, I do this because I love it. I make good money, but I, I love what I do, and that's the game. Mr. Guy, I noticed that you have. Uh, this is 2019, 18, et cetera, right here. This is the sticker. We got to get you the new one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I get people coming and actually ask me about that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, how do I get it? And it's easier to show them this than trying to spell <laughs> spectacular. Yeah, it confuses a lot of people. The G yeah. really, really messes people up. I'll get you some new ones, and uh, if you want to give them away, you can. Uh, the fun show. Yeah, the fun show. Did you go? I was there. I took the club bus in for free ride. Uh, my daughter met me there with my granddaughter. Oh, I got a story for you. There was a dealer there from Chicago, had four tables. And uh, my daughter was looking at buying me a coin for, I don't know what, for my birthday maybe. And I collect owls. I like owls. Mm -hmm. And she goes, Dad, Dad, would you like the coin here? I said, that's going to come into the store. And the guy behind the counter says, says to my daughter, to the store, I goes, yeah, my, my, my dad is coin guy. And the guy looked at me and said, you're coin guy from YouTube. <laughs> coin guy from YouTube. And this is a guy like maybe 23, 24 years old. And he goes, I've got to get your picture. i got to show my friends. This is a guy in Chicago. And now me, you know, being modest as I am, I said, sure, you can take my picture. I grabbed my granddaughter and said, hey, he took our <laughs> picture. I was outrageous. I told my wife and she didn't believe me. But I said, yeah, this, I'm, I'm known in Chicago, too. That's awesome. But uh, my first impressions, I was at the show last year, and I was at the Summer Fun. And the biggest thing I saw there was paper money they were pushing. Mm -hmm. Paper money, I never saw so many large bills in my life. But this show, front and center, was gold. Yeah. Gold, every country you could think about. There were some guys who must have had, if they get an award for the most amount of countries in gold, they, some of them had it. There must have been some guys here with 70 different countries. Yeah. 60 different fractional size gold coins. I mean, there was just piles of gold. It's like I tell people, if you really want to see capitalism at its best, go to a large coin show. You will see a billion, and I mean with a B, a billion dollars on display. Maybe more. I mean, piles and piles of gold, uh, piles of ancient coins, but gold was front and center at this show. If you've never been to a major show, this is the place to go to realize you get jaded when you go there because you'll see Proof 68, What Can Liberty Haves, uh, which is stuff that's really like, wow. I think Proof Walk is some of the most beautiful coins there are. Absolutely. But you'll see rows of them. They'll make crescent circles of them. They'll have 40 of them on display. <laughs> you know, the 1936 is probably $15,000. There'll be four of them. Yeah. I mean, it's just, they had the one display for, sack, for stacks, which is on 57th Street in Manhattan, uh, just off of 6th Avenue. Uh, I've been in stacks a number of times when I lived on Long Island and I would go into the city with the kids. But they had a display of paper money. They had three $5,000 bills. Three of the five best known 5,000, the highest graded $5,000 bills. They were premium paper quality. They were MS 65s. Three of the five known. Yours for $1.4 million. Jeez. 1.4 million. Did you carry that kind of cash with you? No, and I was talking to the guy that was one of their salesmen. That's just those three, but there was incredible paper everywhere. $400,000 bills, you know, bills that were 400,000, 200,000. They had another $5,000 bill in uncirculated 63. And I looked at the guy and said, 63? I didn't want to look at the <laughs> you know. When you go there, you're, you're not like a, a table like everybody else. You actually walk around and buy? I'm either buying or I was selling. I go anyway because I love the walk around and look at the stuff. And I was going because my daughter's going to meet me there later with the granddaughter. We had lunch there. Uh, I look around and I and I try. I judge things when I go there. 
Uh, what I had with me was a four piece. I brought this with me. Now, Gracie puts these coins individually in 70s at $3,700. This is a platinum set. Very expensive. This isn't a W, which is like $6,000. But nobody would buy it. Nobody wanted it? Nope. How come? Nobody even gave me an offer. Wow. Well, first of all, they're testing you. And, uh, you know, I understand what they're trying to say. Well, it's worth a little more than, than the bullion metal. No kidding. But, you know, this coin alone is about $1,300 in gray sheet. Wow. The half... Uh, meanwhile, in bullion, there's $450, $475. Nobody would buy. I mean, some things are just hard to move. Um, I've had this set for many, many years. Um, I bought that set probably 10 years ago 12, at a private home, and um, I couldn't get a bite on it. And I didn't see much platinum there. The whole thing is palladium now. I mean, palladium is just incredible. It's like 2300 now. Yeah. I think it ended the year at seventeen fifty. I'm talking three weeks ago. Yeah, and it it this this stuff has gone up another thirty percent. I mean, it's just why palladium is used in catalytic converters. Well, so is platinum. Right. Which one's cheaper? Right. Which one would you rather well, use? Well, now you can use platinum, obviously, since yeah. palladium is t is over twice as much. Yeah, I don't get I it. don't know what the science is. There's something wrong there, but I don't know. It's almost just based off of the rarity alone, it seems like. I mean, I, I, I can't wrap my head around it, really, but... You go to a fun show, especially the winter fun show, it's like going to a museum, garage sale, flea market. Yes. 90% of the stuff is coins from around the world and ancients, but you're going to have jewelers there. You're going to have people selling artifacts. Um, I mean, I've been to shows where they're trying to sell... You know, the spear point that killed Jesus. They're, they're trying to push anything. <laughs> I mean, there's everything there. You'll see a Roman sword. Uh, some of the stuff, you know, you'll find little figurines. And these are Egyptian. Like, I mean, are the Egyptians, the Egyptian government still looking for those? Yeah, right. I mean, you know, some of them will have 75 of them out there, 50 of them. They can take modern carved bone or modern stone and they put it in camel urine for three days it's a story i heard camel urine camel urine all right and then they take it out and dry it and it ages it it makes it look like it's 1700 or 2700 years old <laughs> there's always an angle you know I, I you know it's a game uh and you know what that sounds crazy enough to be true <laughs> let's get some camel urine in here you know it's like <laughs> that's why i guess when you buy one of those artifacts you smell it <laughs> it's just smell it. So I, not that I know what a camel urine, you know, what do you compare it against? Uh, it smells more like cat to me. I don't know. <laughs> My newspapers, yes. I put a stack of them out in the front lobby at the front where you go to register. And I put about a dozen of those right in the middle of everybody's coin show this week and coin show that Can week. Can you show me one of those? Sure. I am the front page. I don't know where they got the word sensation. But, you uh, are a sensation. Come on, look at you. Sensation. But that's here. That's this cool. is in the, uh, the the local paper. Okay, so. 30,000 people get this in uh, Spring Hill area. And I just subscribed to uh, to Citrus also, so 60,000. Jeez. But this one is cool. Here's a picture of me. I got a whole bunch of fan mail from the kids from Cruise Lake. I got like 100 uh, thank you uh, letters telling me what they saw. The girls love, the girls mostly love the love token story and about that. Uh, and actually, next month, uh, the Spring Hill, uh, this senior voice is going to, my ad will be in next month in both Citrus and in, in, in uh, down here in, in uh, Spring Hill. And it'll be opposite my ad. You're a famous guy. That's my regular ad. But opposite my ad will be the story about love tokens. And I had ran it about, they they ran it about, I don't pay for any of that. They This I pay for, but not that. Um, they ran uh, they ran about the uh, love tokens in the senior voice about three years ago. 
and they're going to run it again. They ask, what can we run? I said, why don't you just run that again? I mean, it's, it's Valentine's Day is in the middle of February, so there you go. That's what they used to do. I mean, uh, a man who loved a girl used to give her a love token, a carved out back of a coin. Much I think that's a cool story. It is. It's awesome. And it's very Americana, and I'm all about Americana. You know, this guy right here made a cool story too. Yeah, <laughs> my story is in here. It's the true story. I got the first coin I ever found over there. I seen I, I've seen this before, and people seem to think that this man right here is me. Yeah, that's not you. No, it's not. But me. you get to see a view of part <laughs> of my shop on that side there. Yeah, and yeah. he he asked for permission, and uh, you know the girl taking the pictures. They make the fun of me all through this too about the fact that I still I still use a flip phone. And they couldn't find a computer in the store. Speaking of phone, and I there it goes. That. I just got a phone call from a person who said, I've got these 1968S pennies. What will you pay me for them? I said, 1968S uncirculated penny is not a rare coin. It's funny because I had a person come in here and tell me he ordered one. I think it was from that one grading people, those people who are out in New Hampshire. And he paid $4 for it. Hmm. For a 1968S uncirculated penny. Here we go, 1968S, uncirculated pennies. It's all the same thing? Yep, 65 rolls. Jeez. Unks. These are unks. The back, this slide makes it look like they're not, but these are unks. This is just probably laying against the paper. Here's 65, here is 65 rolls. Unbelievable. So I guess that's why you didn't want to buy them. <laughs> well, I, I tried to tell him that, and he hung up on me because I didn't tell him. You know, maybe somewhere he looked, and he found it somewhere where these were $1,000 a coin. I don't know, but I've got tons of this stuff. I mean, it's just there is no realistic market for it. Then he goes, I got 1979 Those I don't even keep on the slide. <laughs> no, no way. Go to the bank and get those. Now you can watch the video and see why you didn't want them. Exactly. <laughs> Here's a piece I bought this morning. Uh, this is one of those illustrations where, where the difference in a grade. Now this is the 84S Morgan dollar. In gray sheet, this coin is $150 in AU50. Uh -huh. In AU58, it's $1,500. Big difference. How much is a 55? This is where you get you play the game that I love. This is well, how much am I going to give you for this? You know, you gotta. There's no there's no gray sheet on it. You look at eBay and you bounce it around. I paid three hundred for this. I thought that was a fair price. Can I touch it? Yeah, sure. Okay. Nathan looked it up. They're going for about four fifty on eBay, so three hundred was fair. Because you still got to negotiate. eBay gets their pound of flesh. Yeah. Now, do you think that's a fair grade on this? No, I actually think that coin's better than the 55. The reverse Once looks again, great. Once again, you know, the reverse is spectacular. Reverse looks like a 58. See, this is where you have the point where, you know, grading is subjective. Um, it's actually, I put that sign up because I've always had it over here. Grading, coin grading is subjective. Yeah, you put it right there on your wall. You look at this and say, hey, should I send this coin in again? Maybe this, you know, at one time, this coin looks like it had proof fields, especially the, the front, the obverse. You could see proof fields. Does it pay to send it in? Um, you know, like I said, the graders are human beings. I can't always agree with their opinion. But then again, that's why it's called subjective. You know, I've been grading coins for 50 years, and some of your graders are in their 20s. Some of the major coin grading companies have... 30 employees. And from what I understand, they have to sometimes look at as many as 1,500 coins a day. Yeah. That's not a make-believe. I've heard higher numbers. I'm, I'm going on, the, uh, especially the modern coinage. You know, you're looking at 1,500, 2,000 coins a day. How much individual attention you're going to give them? I'm going to poise a question that I had said to a friend of mine here. And, you know, you're in a world where you have technology that does facial recognition and I've said this six months ago and a person was arguing from another point the major grading companies 
make a lot of money on grading, and I don't hold that against them. Why isn't there an app for facial recognition that can be applied to coin grading? That'd be a great idea. I don't understand why it isn't done. I agree. And, you know, I think any dealer's got to look at it, you know, staying politically correct. If you can tell the difference between a Northern Korean and a Southern Chinese person that their families have been living apart because of a river for 5,000 years, and they can still tell them apart at the airport. You see the movies where they are click, 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 and they can tell these people apart right away. Absolutely. What diagnostics are there? You know, you're looking, especially the lower grade stuff wouldn't make a, deal, a difference. A fine is a fine on a, almost any grading company with a barber coinage or with a seeded coinage. It's when you get into the high grade stuff where the difference is thousands of dollars on coins. You, how many diagnostic combinations are there on coins? Okay, there's different types of large pennies. There's different types of quarters and halves, but a couple of hundred? They can do a billion different faces. Why couldn't they do this? Yep. Why can't you do it to coins? Absolutely. I'll tell you why my opinion is. My friend tells me <clears> that <throat> the grading companies looked into this and they've spent millions on the technology and they couldn't perfect it. Maybe that's true. I'm a bit of a skeptic. I'm thinking they spent millions on it, patented it, and buried it. Yeah. That's my opinion. That's possible. Truly my opinion. That's totally possible. It's like the old story where they, they got some kind of pill you can throw in water and make gasoline. Well, I'm sure that Shell and those companies made that disappear, and that patent disappeared. The reverse on this coin is beautiful. Maybe it is a 55 overall. It's PCGS. I, it's not worth it. In a way, maybe it is. Maybe it's worth 40 bucks. Because if I can get this bump to a 58... Oh, that's big money. You, know, you make big money. That's like, that brings up another point where, you, you know, when you look at populations of coins and they'll say, well, uh, you know, there's X amount of a coin. You know, you look up some rare dated coins that have mintages of, you know, there's 500 known, but there's 700 coins that have been graded. Well, how is that possible? That's because people have sent in the same coin multiple times. Oh. Multiple times, and that's very common to get a different grade. I did not know about that. That's interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's fascinating. That's a common thing. There was a member of our club who was selling a collection, and he did a talk, an education to us. Uh, 60 or 80 coins he sent in. He sent into a large auction house. They broke out every coin he had and re-had re them slapped. This story is related to me by the person who owned them. He says, to, he's doing a talk and saying, every coin came back at least one point higher. Well, I raise my hand and say, don't you find something fundamentally wrong with that? Absolutely. Like I said, coin grading is subjective, and I guess if you do tens of millions of dollars with some companies, you know, I don't know. I don't want to go any further than that. I'm just saying I find it very interesting. It is interesting. I, uh, at one of the shows, I met a guy who does grading, and he uh, was talking to me for a little bit. And he said that the coin that I showed him was in good condition. And he said, uh, hold on to it for a few years, a few years and have it, have it graded again, because he said the, pro the uh, grade would probably go up due to grading inflation, he called it. And I was like so shocked by that. I was like, how can you do that? It doesn't make any sense. There's nothing graded higher than that. Right there, 1956 proof 69 star. That's because the front's a cameo. If I get a CAC stick on that, how much is it now? I guess it's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't you know, know I, I look bucks? at the, you know, I remember when the CAC first started. You know, I remember the old timers back in the 80s telling me, well, the certified, this this will never last. This is never going to last. You know, this is back in 1988, 89. This will never last. And you had a number system of 70 numbers you had to know. And nobody's going to accept the plastic. They want to hold the coin. Well, the CAC system is the newest gimmick that's come along. Now, you know, to an old timer like me, that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, when you, I recently, last year, I picked up a three-legged buffalo. It's a certified VF20. 
I believe it was a VF20 or 25 CAC. This coin, I sell it for more money than an extra fine. I almost get an AU price on it. Hmm. I mean, it was just incredible. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It, it, to me, it's ridiculous. It's it's a, a coin grading company double checking on another coin grading company. Exactly. And now I've seen too where like price guides will have the regular price. Yep. And then they'll have with the CAC sticker on there as well. Yeah, you'll see that in gray sheet. And it's got to be the CAC people paying to have their name in these these uh, magazines saying, hey, we need a special grading for our stickers. Uh, should I CAC this? A friend of mine gets can get it CAC. It'll cost me $35, but you put it up, somebody might pay me $800 for it. Who knows? There's nothing in $70. You'll see $70s in modern coins, but anything pre-1960 can be capped. I don't know. I, I think I might just spend the $30 if I can get $500. Yeah. It's almost like a game. It gets to be a little, it almost takes away from it. Now, these are the old rattlers. So... Why do they call them rattler? Because they rattle. Because they and rattle. And these won't rattle. The dimes will rattle a lot easier. But this is the first generation grading. These, these are back in 85, 86. This is the first generation. This is what they look like. Uh, See, it's interesting because you can buy these old slabs and get them regraded. Oh, yeah. And they get a higher grade. Because they were much more conservative in these days. Mm -hmm. From what I understand... These companies guaranteed the grade, so they would be more conservative because it was their reputation, and they'd have to make good on the coin, Right. from what I understand. Um, now, these are proofs, a 41 proof, a 42 proof quarter, kind of cool coins. Yep. But And it worth grading? Yes. But is it worth grading a $28 coin? No, because it costs at least 20 bucks prior to grade it. $23. Plus the membership. You know, and this is a coin from the 40s. And then now they get a handling charge when you give them coins, too. I mean, you're shipping both ways. You're paying for a coin. It could very easily cost you $35 a coin to get a coin certified. It almost wipes out the, you know, you look at the prices on Eagles now, the certified Eagles. I Before the price of silver went up back in June, I did a show, and I was selling NGC PCGS Eagles five for $100. Wow. Certified. Five for a hundred. Yeah. I mean, because there's just not the market to buy them anymore. A, there's just too many, there's just too many eagles that have been made. So many. And, uh, and I got, in the 70s, yeah, you get people come in here and they'll say, well, you know, I paid $80 a piece for the 2009 eagle uh, in a 70 or a 69. And I'll say, yeah, but you bought it in, 19, in 2011 when silver was 50. Anybody who's been in this business long enough, he looks at the price of semi-key pennies. I was just looking the other day at Gray Sheet, and you had the price of, uh, I think it's the 13S. 13S penny. 13S penny, $6. Six bucks. Now, if I pull out a Gray Sheet from 10 years ago, I'll bet you that 13S was $18. Come down ways. Fifteen dollars. Wow. I mean, it's just, and that's another thing that's happening when you get people coming in, and you know, here's my grandfather's collection, or here's this collection, and I say, well, it's gotten to be now where I'm going to put twenty six s's. I think a twenty six s is more money than a thirteen s now. Uh, there's just so many of them out there. What am I going to do? Yeah. This is just your mid-level semi-key pennies. There's 200 here. Wow. 10S, 11, 12, 13, 14S, 15S, 22D, 24D. I don't even put 26Ss in here. I put them in tubes now. And I'm going to start putting 13Ss in tubes. Anything below a fine, we sell them, you know, we put them online and sell them 10 at a time. Jeez. It's just... So many. And this doesn't count the high-grade ones out there. And this in here, BFs and XFs. It's just so many of them that come in. You know, you buy every collection you buy. You get to fold the paper, the blue books. And there's just so many of them. It's, they're not, there's not enough coin collectors. Right. So, you know, <laughs> the young people coming up. 
I've said that it's one of my favorite sayings. I'm, I'm sure Nathan's heard me say it a hundred times. The young people now collect tattoos and bills. Yeah. You know, nothing against tattoos, but they, there's no time for history. Is this bell new? Did I just not see that bell before? I picked that up a while ago. That's Has anybody ever had to use that in your store? You're always up front. No, I'm always here. <laughs> my grandkids liked it. I played with them with that. Oh, I bet this they like it. It looks like it came out of a hotel or something. Yeah. You know. I think it says Betty on it. What does it say? Right here. Betsy. Betsy. Yeah. Maybe this belonged to Paul Revere. And that was <laughs> Betsy Ross's bell. Yeah. Betsy, yes. <laughs> I'm riding on his horse. All right, Mr. Guy, so I appreciate you letting us come by the shop again and giving us some knowledge. And it's fun just to come by and see what you have. And it's always something different every time. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad, too, that you don't mind being on YouTube and, and talking to people. Um, it's a breath of fresh air when a, a coin shop dealer is willing to talk so freely and openly and, and have a good time with you, man. It's just it's fun. I'm trying to share the hobby I love. And you've heard me say that a number of times. I share what I love. It's about history. It's about the world. Um, it's about our country. And, um, you know, I, I just want to share it. Come see me. Come visit me. And uh, have a happy new year. Thank you so much. And I, I agree that we should share this hobby and people should share this video. Let the other people know that, you know, this is a lot of fun. And, you know, uh, let them know about your shop, too. Maybe they can come by and see you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.